my phone began blowing up with text messages and emails from superintendents and principals. You must see this film. It will transform our students' lives in North Dakota. You have to see this. Right now, we are attempting to educate a generation of kids who will work in jobs that have not been invented yet. What can we do to engage and inspire our teachers and our students in the school experience? Because kids that are really interested and motivated, they go 50 to 100 miles an hour. And kids that are bored to tears that have to be pushed through the material, they go one to one and a half miles an hour. How do we set up not only the right conditions for our students, but how do we as a community broadly come together to set up the right conditions for our teachers? And there is a growing critical mass of people that believe that we do need to change the model of education. The barriers are tradition. You have a system that has been in place for centuries, and the results have been okay. There is a risk and a fear that if we change, we don't know what the end result will be. So films like this that really show the success and the result in a tangible, concrete manner breaks down those fears, it breaks down those barriers, and it allows them to say, that's what I want for my student, that's what I want for my child, that's what I want for my state. Most likely to succeed does two things. It opens with an argument that says the world is changing at hyper speed and our kids are not being prepared for that hyper changing world in a traditional education system that was created in the late 1800s. I think that uh, education has a, a responsibility and obligation to really change and transform and innovate to a system that truly identifies that student's passion purpose and possibility. I think more and more we're finding kids disengaged from school and that's whether they're in school on physical promises and maybe even more so if they're remote. Um, and you know I think that um, if you really watch the film or you know the history of education it was really built to prepare students or people at that point to work in factories and it was really a, a sort and classify and divide uh, system um, where kids really weren't leading their own learning. You know, I really used the documentary to open up the eyes of what's possible, what can be accomplished in any type of school. And not that I've ever said, you know, I want to be high tech high. Um, that's the way they did it. But could we take some of the lessons and some of the formats and some of the beliefs that they have that I think most people have about kids that if you set high expectations and give them some room to run and voice and choice, um, extraordinary things can happen. And I showed the film in my district too uh, when we were in implementing some of our programs and it really went a long way in having the parents have a different perspective and viewpoint around education. It's not just reading, writing, arithmetic, but it's sometimes, you know, it's, it's communication, it's cognition, it's creativity, it's, it's all these other things and it's community. And that made a difference uh, when they saw that film and they saw it in action now is more real to them. It's like a concept that is just not in their minds, but they can actually see it. Way, way back in 2016, January of 2016, I, I screened most likely for the second time. It was to an audience of community and uh, members and educators. It was uh, the entire spectrum of our community. It was 175 people. Um, and we did a, an absolutely epic post film uh, round table, uh, 25 different round tables, seven or eight people around the table. And basically that activity was kicked off by asking them to take three or four minutes quietly to write down every question, every important question that the film generated in their minds. And then the tables simply went after those questions and discussed them in, in as much depth as possible. And the result of that was that, uh, as I heard afterwards, there were people who talked all the way home, an argument broke out in the women's bathroom about certain elements of what had happened in the film. 
Um, some of my former students sat out on the street in their car. They came together until three o'clock in the morning talking about it. All three are teachers now, by the way. Similarly, pre-pandemic, um, Katina Suarez, who's the principal at Molokai High School, screened the film to her entire community. And the activity that she did after that was, was really wonderful. So we got gathered all of our staff and um, we actually watched um, the movie together and had discussions about creating um, a profile of a Molokai graduate. At night, we um, did a community event. So we invited um, different agencies. We invited all the Native Hawaiian agencies. We invited um, politicians. We invited clergy. We invited some nonprofit organizations. Anyone who worked within the community and could have an impact or a potential future partner um, in learning. And so we invited them, we watched the movie, and then we had discussions around, again, the profile of a high school graduate. So this was January 2019. And then this January, we had a follow-up session and did the same thing during the day with staff and then during at night with the community. And we presented like, this is a draft of the profile of a high school graduate. We wanna get some feedback. Uh, we talked about the work that we had done in the meantime. And um, then it was kind of a call to action. How are you gonna help us? So, you know, you're saying you want all of our kids to be problem solvers. How can you as a community member or you as, um, you know, our um, council representative, how can you help our kids get get there what was so important about that was that the community felt like they became part of figuring out what kind of kids molokai high school was going to graduate and it wasn't just about college or bust or whether your kid was going to go into the trades this was about the kinds of skills and habits and dispositions that molokai kids would have for their entire lives and that the very future of molokai which would be a balance between the, 20, the pressures of the 21st century and keeping Molokai Molokai, that those kids would be the standard bearers. They would be the stewards of that idea. In Freehold, you know, as Ted came and saw, we really transformed in, in a short period of time where our classrooms were much more student-led, student-centered, where students actually set goals um, and measured progress towards their goals. You saw so much more small group instruction um, and teachers working with kids more as a mentor and a coach. They really kind of changed their role to facilitators of learners and, and facilitating learning instead of directing learning. Um, much more um, project-based, um, passion projects, some we, you know, one year we were calling it Google 20% time, but just the kids were having so much more voice and choice. And you saw that in our classrooms. You saw such enthusiasm, such energy, you know, as Ted kind of got to see, kids were giving kids feedback and helping them grow as learners. You know, it was interesting because, you know, I think when you start an initiative like that, you have a, a bunch of staff that want to lead, that jump right on board. Um, and, and I think because they had such success and because our kids were having such success, you know, by the end, you know, I felt like I pulled in the beginning a few along. At the end, I think I was just fueling the fire. Most likely to succeed helped us develop this wonderful model this year that we're piloting called Team 19. The kids actually named it, meaning the year they're gonna graduate 2019. And instead of spending a year and a half planning it out, you know, we said, look, we're gonna we're gonna plan this out in a shorter period of time because this is such a great idea that we don't want to let another ninth grade group come through and not experience what we think that we can develop with this new new interdisciplinary approach. Well, I totally understand that in a pandemic moment. It might seem a little bit tone deaf to say, look, here's High Tech High and here's this giant gathering of people for a public exhibition of incredible, you know, project-based interdisciplinary learning. But on the other hand, project-based learning, experiential learning, learning where kids are guided and coached and sponsored and mentored is the kind of learning that's gonna prepare them for the 21st century. And that that kind of learning is as important now during this pandemic as it ever was.
I think some people might say, well, you know, profiles of a graduate is a conversation I probably shouldn't be having right now during the pandemic. I mean, what I'm trying to figure out is whether I can even go back to school or not, whether I can have kids back at school or not. My belief is that what happened that night when they all got together and made their contributions to the profiles of a Molokai graduate, I think what happened that night was that the community became a little bit more resilient and that possibly the end, re uh, the end result or one consequence of that is that here in the middle of this pandemic, that community is even more resilient than it was before and that that night played a role in that. Everybody was together. Everybody was making a contribution. All voices were honored in that moment. And that's what builds resiliency in a community. And when a pandemic slips into your community, it's resiliency that's gonna get you through. So I, I, I think the idea is that a screening of most likely to succeed will get you into some of those places that you really wanna go because we have to figure out not just how to survive the pandemic, but who we are going to be as a society after the pandemic is over and what are the skills and habits and dispositions of our kids once we get to the other side. The virus itself, in a weird kind of way, wants to limit us. It wants to shut us down. And this is precisely the moment where you push back against that and say, is this the moment to dip my toes into project-based learning? Absolutely. Is this the moment to shadow students? Absolutely. Is this when we should be looking at the profiles of our graduates, either middle school or high school? Absolutely. Let's take a real close look at who our kids are going to be and, and what skills and habits and dispositions they have when we come out of it. And I think the idea here is that you can actually build community through these activities and it's the building of the community that's going to get us through this thing. This is an epic moment for us to to really push this issue of how do we form into a community, um, how does a school or a complex or a district see itself as it takes a village, that we're all going to work on this together. Um, and with parents at home fulfilling the role of, you know, learning coach more, more than ever before, what a great moment to enroll them. So let's show the film to parents. Let's do a watch party with parents and give them a chance to talk about this, generate questions, have the conversations. Conversations set people free. That's, they, it liberates them from, from you know, traditional um, conservative thinking about what school has been and allows them to sort of step out and think about what school could be. So I, I really encourage people to take that step and to find a way to show the film either synchronously or asynchronously um, possibly to do an online watch party, which is like super fun. And you can let people actually talk during the film via the chat, which is, you know, usually you wouldn't normally do when you do a film screening, right? Everybody's supposed to be quiet. But the chat is actually a really rich function of back channel conversation. Um, and so what will come out of that is the same thing that came out all of the times that I've ever screened the film prior to this COVID-19 pandemic, which is, People walked away from it just fired up with questions. Every kind of question that you could think of. What is the purpose of learning? What is the role of the teacher? What is the role of the school in, in helping kids be most likely to succeed? That will happen whether you do an online watch party, or whether you actually do a socially distant uh, watch party in your, in your principal's garage. Whichever way it happens, the film has not lost any importance. It's actually gained in importance. We have to educate those coming out and coming up through the education system as teachers and administrators and leaders and even board members, you know, open up, <laughs> be, 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 be able to innovate, be willing to look at different ways to do things, you know, don't be afraid of failure, um, just fail forward and have the, um, the strength to do it together. You will be successful. You will make that change and, and the innovation will happen and you'll see communities coming together, states coming together, countries coming together, and the world will come together because we're all on one planet, one race, the human race. We all have to survive together. And I don't see anybody moving to Mars or the moon anytime soon. <laughs> so let's figure this out. And education is a big part of that.